Welcome to the Bland and Art Museum. Thank you for joining me today. This is Look and Learn, a podcast about artwork currently on display at the Blandon. The goal of this podcast is to connect with the Blandon members and learn about different works of art currently on display. Each week, sharing personal impressions and information on selected works of art and the artists who created them. Today we'll be looking at and comparing the prints, Landscape by Dewey E. by Thomas Moran, printed in 1870, and Volterra, The Town in the Clouds, by John Taylor Arms, printed in 1927. Both prints are currently on display as part of the exhibit Encounters with Nature at the Blandon. The two prints present the viewer with etched printed images of pathways that are surrounded by nature. The viewer is asked to walk down each path that leads to different destinations and different encounters along the way. Each print is rich with marks and unique expressive quality connected to the artist that created the work. Thomas Moran was born 1873. He was an American painter and printmaker who is more widely known for his paintings than for his prints. Thomas was part of the Hudson River School of Art in New York and his work often featured the Rocky Mountains and landscape of the American West. He was a talented illustrator and exquisite colorist. Thomas provided colorful illustrations for Scribner's Monthly, an American literary magazine for the people, later renamed Century Magazine. His position as chief illustrator for the magazine helped launch his career as one of the premier painters of the American Western landscape. His artistic career started as a teenage apprentice to a Philadelphian wood engraving firm. He would later state that engraving, the engraving process was tedious. He was not a fan. During this time with the firm, he would use his free, free time working on watercolors. Thomas was fascinated and inspired by the work of English painter Turner. He emulated Turner, Turner's use of color and choices of landscapes. Looking at the print Landscapes After Dubigny by Thomas Moran is based off an image created by another artist, Charles Dubigny, a practice that is common with student artists used to gain valuable insight. Looking past this being a study in practice and understanding, what I enjoy the most about this print is the pathway that bends off to the right, leading the viewer to guess and imagine what is around the bend. The viewer becomes a participant walking along what I guess is a small stream, walking by individuals fishing in the cool moving waters, figures which are barely noticeable if looked at too quickly. The viewer needs to slow down and enjoy every mark, every tree, and every blade of grass to see the whole. Some questions we can ask, is the path taking us home or to the next village? Or is it a metaphor about life and the journey we are all on? Looking at the other print, Volterra, The Cl- Town in the Clouds, by John Taylor at Arms, printed in 1927, was part of his series of churches in Italy and France. It is an etched print of a town, the town of Vol- Volterra, which is located in Tuscany, Italy, a town rich with medieval frescoes and buildings. This print is another great image that, uh, that one can create a series of wonderful narratives for. The viewer becomes a traveler on the road, coming out of the darkness and into the light, heading towards the steeple that is seen at the top of the hill. The road could be seen as a metaphor representing life, with the ups and downs, the ins and outs, towards the ultimate goal that is attainable, with, but not without perseverance. One could read this as a religious journey out of the darkness of the world towards the light-filled goal of the uh, eternal. The printed image is full of little vertical elements that have the effect of pointers pointing up, up, up to the top and beyond. These vertical elements could also add, also add a beat and a rhythm that moves the viewer's eyes throughout the image. John Taylor Arms was born in 1887 in Washington, D.C. He studied law at Princeton University and then architecture at MIT 
finally graduating in 1912. After graduating, he served in the U.S. Navy during World War I. As his time ended in service to the country, he devoted himself to etching full-time, publishing his first etching in 1919. His first initial subjects were the, were the Brooklyn Bridge and New York City, which was not far from his studio. Seeing these prints next to each other, one can see the different ways artists depict the very, very similar subjects. The path leading one onto a destination, one clearly defined, the other open to interpretation. The variety of marks that the artist can use to create an etching shows the expressive quality of this printing method. Well, that's all I have for today. Thank you for listening in. As you're going about your day, think about the different ways you encounter nature. Let it inspire you. Enjoy it. Be creative. Bye for now. See you next time.